This is Road Noise, episode number 33, 14 Work Hacks to Make Life Better. Hello again and welcome to another episode of Road Noise, life one mile at a time. I'm your host, Michael Blackston. This is episode number 33. We're going to talk about 14 work hacks that will make your life better in the workplace. I can talk about this even though I am the boss of my own company and I really don't have an office office area because my office is happens to be wherever I am at the moment. This morning I'm headed to Clinton, North Carolina as this is recorded. It's 5.30 in the morning and I'm headed up 20 west, no I'm going up 20 east about to be going into the Columbia, South Carolina area, Uh, like I said, into Clinton, North Carolina. That's my final destination this morning. going to be there for a couple of days. And when I get there, my workspace, my office area, is just going to be a manufacturing plant type place, a dusty place where they do tombstones. So that's really kind of my area of working. But I do have an office at home. And previously to working for myself and traveling and doing this stuff on site at Monument Companies, I did work in environments for 15, 16, 17 years where I would have liked to have had some of these work hacks. You've all seen the life hacks and things like that, little things you can do at home to improve life at home to make things a little bit easier using things that you've got laying around the house I love those things and those blogs and stuff you see on Pinterest and in fact some of the 14 things that I'm going to talk about today I got off Pinterest I love that stuff because for me it's neat it's neat to say you know slap your head your hand against your head and say why didn't I think of that and I use a lot of that stuff today and so if you're in a work environment, especially if you like work in a cubicle or at a desk, some of these things might be very interesting to you and I hope that they will help have a fun and interesting way to kind of clean things up, organize, or make things a little more interesting in your work environment. So let's get started with 14 work hacks to make life better. Number one, I want to talk about binder clips. There are several things you can do with binder clips and you know what I'm talking about when I mention binder clips. They're the little black metal flat black clips that kind of form a triangle and they have levers on the back you squeeze them and it opens up and then you let it go and it clamps down on whatever you need it to the mostly it's for uh, I think originally for large stacks of paper that a paper clip wouldn't be useful for because the stack of paper was too heavy or too thick these binder clips were made so that they could hold those together and they've got a strong grip so there are a lot of useful things for them and I could go on and on I probably could have done an entire episode on uses and work hacks or home hacks for binder clips and I use them at my home office as well but I just mentioned two or three of these to get you started and if you're interested in finding out more ways you can use binder clips you can look online and do the same research I did just type in hacks with binder clips or binder clip hacks or something like that type it into Google and you'll find a myriad of different things that you can get into uh, with that type of thing but for one thing I use them for mainly is to organize my cords you've probably seen this in the regular life hacks blogs if you take the binder clip and clip it clamp it clamp it or clip it to the side of your desk if you've got a desk that is able to do that it's got a little lip on it you can usually take one of the larger ones at least and clamp it to the edge lip of your desk and it'll stay there and you've got the little handles in the back that I mentioned that you use to squeeze it open well you can take those handles off they just kind of squeeze into little holes in the back and you can take those off and a neat thing to do is whatever cords are in your desk uh, that are kind of you know how it is when you've got your charger cables and any kind of cord or cables that would fit through those clips you can feed the cord through the back of those uh, handles on the binder clip and it'll hold it in place and I do this for my phone charger for my iPad charger 
and for my laptop charger, they all get fed through, I think I've got two of them. One of them holds two cords and one of them holds one cord. And I just feed it through, I have it on the kind of the backside, left-hand edge of my desk that has a little lip on it. And I clamped it to it, fed the cords through and it keeps them organized instead of falling all over the place and you're hunting around on the floor trying to pick it up. They, it keeps them from getting bound together, things like that. They're also good because you can take that little handle on the back and hang it on a nail or maybe a push pin and you can hang one side of the handle on that and the other handle kind of, because the binder clip is made into a triangle shape, it'll sort of lay with the other handle sticking up exposed and you can hang things on it like uh and you don't want to put well i guess, actually i guess depending on how heavy your thing is it should be fine and depending on what you're using you wouldn't want to hang anything very heavy if you're securing it up on the wall by a push pin because push pins don't have a whole lot to hang into the wall unless you're putting it into wood if you're putting it into cork board, it probably would pull the push pin out. But if you're hanging it into something that's fairly supportive, a wall that's fairly supportive, or even better yet, if you take a, one of those little coffee mug hooks and screw it into the wall and then hang the binder from it, you can hang things like headphones, maybe your purse, things that kind of help you get organized. You can also hang something else lighter weight from it by uh, hanging your earbuds. You can keep your earbuds in a nice organized fashion by wrapping them around it, hang it on the wall and then wrap it around the, uh, the little clamp, the little binder clip. And it just keeps everything nice and organized. There are all kinds of things binder clips can do. I'm just scratching the surface there with binder clips because like I said, if you go online and you look there are a lot of things you can do with those. They're very useful, handy little tools and the functionality that they have naturally that they were originally made for and just due to the shape that they have, a lot of little side uses that you may not have even thought, thought about. So go to Binder Clips, uh, look it up in Google and figure out what you can do to make life better in your workplace using Binder Clips. Did you know that you might be able, and I... I stress the word might be able to reset your ink cartridge. If you're at work and your printer says your ink is getting low or you need to replace your ink, on some printer cartridges, that's not really the truth. They are set to give you that little announcement on your screen to make you stop using that one and go buy a new one. When really, and, and, and I know that the the printer and ink companies will tell you that's not the reason, but I'm one of those skeptical type of people who believes that companies like that go and find little ways to make you throw away perfectly good stuff to buy something new so that they can make money. I'm just one of those people that believes that there are companies that do that, and I think printer companies are one of them. As a matter of fact, if you'll notice, when you buy a printer, you're going to spend way more money on ink than you will the printer. You can just about buy a brand new printer if you're not needing one of those really workhorses for the office, if you're just needing something to sit by your uh, computer, you can get an HP or Lexmark or something like that, uh, Epson printer, uh, a lower model, fairly cheaply, almost for the same price of buying a few cartridges. It's the ink where they make their money. So if you pull out your ink cartridge and you look at the little computer area on it, the basically the little part that the printer reads, it's got the little circuit board type thing on it. If you look on there, a lot of times there is a little button in the middle of that circuit board on the ink cartridge. And if you will straighten out a paper clip, many times you can press that little button in the middle of the ink cartridge and reset the ink cartridge. And when you put it back in, it will show it as at least half full and you can continue using it because what you may notice is that the ink starts looking like it's about to run out and then when you reset the ink cartridge it's working just fine again now the reason I said might when I started this was because when I first tried this I had a Lexmark computer 
and it did not work with the Lexmark computer. I was told by somebody that the HP computers are more likely to do it. Uh, or I'm saying computer, I meant printer. I had a Lexmark printer and the cartridges, it just would not work on that. There was a button that was supposed to work, but it did not. I have not tried it with my HP. I recently bought a new HP printer and I have not run out of ink cartridges with it, so we're going to try it when it comes. So I'm not going to tell you that it will work every time, but it's something worth trying because ink cartridges are very expensive. So if you run out of one before you rush to Staples or uh, Office Depot or somewhere and buy a bunch of ink cartridges, sure, go ahead for backup, but give that a shot. Straighten out a, uh, a paper clip and then punch that little button in the back of the uh, circuit board on the ink cartridge and see if you can reset it and get a little more use out of that ink cartridge and save yourself tons of money that way. I hope it works for you. Again, it may or may not, but I hope it does. Number three, have you ever had to put one of those long extension cord heads that had the several, it's, it's a big bus of extension cord outlets I don't know why I'm drawing a blank as to what those are actually called, but it's basically a bus of outlets, has usually five or six outlets and a reset button and an on-off button, and then it's got the little cord that plugs into the regular outlet to give you a whole bunch of extra outlets. If you look on the back, there are usually either two in the middle or four, uh, two at the top, two at the bottom, places for you to secure it to the wall. There are holes that you would drill screws into the wall and then place the holes over the screws and then push it up or down to secure it into a little groove that will keep it tight on the wall for you. Well, one of the hardest things to do with those is to mount them on the wall, mount the screws in a place because they have to be perfectly in line with those little holes or it's not going on the wall. And there were a bunch of them over the years that I had tried to put on walls and you just try to eyeball them and it does not work and you make a bunch of holes in the walls and you, it just is frustrating. And when I saw this hack the first time, there are two different hacks for that one that I'm going to add into this one little section on the electrical buses that worked for me. The second one I actually use more often because it's just quicker for me, but the first one actually makes more sense. Did you know all you got to do is make a Xerox copy of the back of that thing and you have perfectly lined template? Make a Xerox copy and if you need a little more accurate placement, just cut out the area of the bus with some scissors and you've got a perfect template. And then you can just tape that to the wall exactly where you want it. Screw your screws into the paper right where the holes are and then tear the paper away and you've got perfectly aligned screws for putting your bus on the wall securely. Now the way I do it, a secondary way, and this is the first hack that I saw before I even saw the easier one of making a Xerox copy, is by taking some tape, especially if you've got painter's tape, that quick release painter's tape, the blue tape, and I keep that with me because I use that quite a lot with where I work. And so generally what I'll do is I will kind of make, I usually keep two sizes, the real thick kind and the thinner kind. And I'll take the real thick kind and it usually is about the size of the width of the bus. And I'll place it over there and then I'll kind of press it down really well so I can see the indention of the holes. And then I'll just take uh, a pencil right in the center of those indentions and poke a hole in it so it, it creates a template. Then I pull that quick release tape off of the back of the bus and place it wherever I want to on the wall and same thing. I put the screws in where I placed the pencil holes and then tear the tape away and voila, I've got perfectly placed holes uh, or screws to attach the bus to the wall securely. It works beautifully and it completely takes out the frustration of trying to eyeball that stuff and I know I'm not the only one because if, if I were the only one who'd ever had trouble with this, there wouldn't have been a need to show the hack. Number four, I didn't know you could do this, but it kind of makes sense. Have you ever thought, I wish I could control the direction of my Wi-Fi signal? If you've got a Wi-Fi router 
on your desk or somewhere in the office and you really would like to aim the direction of the signal more toward your bank of computers or whatever instead of it just kind of spreading out everywhere so that you get all the power going towards your computers this is a hack I just saw when I started doing the research for this and there are all kinds of hacks that I skipped through I tried to find the ones that I thought were the most interesting for this episode of the podcast and this is something I might try you can take uh, maybe a piece of cardboard or something and wrap it in aluminum foil and put it behind the antennas of the Wi-Fi router and kind of curve it so that it takes the signal and because that Wi-Fi antenna is going to be sending that signal in, a, in 360 degrees. It's going to go out from it all around. But if you take this aluminum foil wrapped piece of cardboard or something and put it behind then the idea is that the signal going behind it bounces off of the Wi-Fi antenna and goes instead of going out the other direction it goes wherever you direct the aim of that tinfoil I don't know if this works or not and I don't know if it would be useful for you but I do know that if it does work it's something that could really help pick up your Wi-Fi signal if you're if you say you've got a bank of computers against one wall and you really don't need the signal signal to go out anywhere else you need it to all come toward the computers so your uh, computers Wi-Fi will pick it up better maybe that's something you'll think about giving it a shot again I don't know how well it works but it's something I saw and if it does work then it might be very useful to you or your office there's a thing called a drink clip you spell it D-R-I-N-K-L-I-P. I guess the K serves as the K sound in drink and K in clip. Uh, it's just one K, D-R-I-N-K-L-I-P. And if you look that up, I'm sure in Google you'll find it. But it is a clamp, a large clamp that clamps again on the lip of your desk if you've got a lip area and then has a cup holder in it. And what it, what it does is it holds your drink cup or your glass securely to your desk right next to you but it holds it where if you hit it it's, it's like your cup holder in your car if you knock it it might slosh around a bit but it's not going to knock it completely over and if it does knock it completely over it's going in the floor not all over your desk it looks like it could be a very valuable simple piece of equipment that you might want to look into purchasing maybe as even a gift for everybody in the office that would be something if I were in an office and I want to do Christmas gifts or uh, for anything birthday gifts or something for people in the office what a wonderful little knickknack simple probably not very expensive I didn't do the research to see how much they cost but probably not very expensive either it's called drink clip and it could save your day as far as knocking over your beverage next up you might not have ever thought about this but do you ever notice that you slump over or hunch your back when you're trying to look at your computer do you have bad posture at your desk maybe raising your computer monitor to eye level will help I don't know how well this will work if you've got a laptop you're using because then the keyboard is right there and you kinda have to put it up you have to use your hands kind of up I don't know how well that would work but if you're using just a com regular desktop computer and your monitor is in a normal area on the desk sometimes those can be a little bit low and you'll find yourself hunching down kind of lowering your neck between your shoulders and if you lift your computer monitor up to eye level it creates a situation where you have to lift your head up a little more which could help neck pain back pain and posture if you have a situation where that would be applicable maybe it's something you try to see if it gives you a little bit of relief on your neck and your back another thing to do with your laptop that I heard on a different podcast the other day and I'm about to try it now this is more for a home office now if you have a really loose office you're not going to have customers and clients coming in all day where it would not be really out of the ordinary and your boss is really easy going maybe you could work this out there but I'm going to be trying this at home this is more for if you have a home office and you're having a hard time finding time to get that exercise in I'm talking about a treadmill desk and basically what I'm in intending to do is find a 
I think I'm going to use, I've got some old six by two lumber and I'm going to cut it down to the right size so it will sit across the bars of my treadmill where you hold, where you put your hands and there are some little hooks on my treadmill or some little openings where I could run hooks where this thing could, you could kind of hook it in there and then lay it down on the bars and put my laptop on the treadmill. Now, why would I want to do that? For efficiency. There are so many times I need to get stuff done. I need to be on my laptop. I need to be typing up a blog or doing some research or something. And I don't have time to do that and get my walk in. Well, I heard a guy on a podcast the other day that was saying he has set up a rig to where he can put his laptop right there in front of him at the treadmill. It's the perfect height for his hands. Everything works well. He can watch TV from it if he wants to. I personally can watch Hulu or Netflix right there on my laptop if I want to. Uh, Or he can work. He can type. This guy was an author, and he got a lot of his writing in in the morning by getting his exercise and his walking done at the same time. Now, you're probably not going to get a jog in that way. You're probably going to need to be walking at about one, two, maybe three miles an hour at the most. I, uh, four miles an hour is hard for me to get going. It, it, it tires me out. You know, that, that's a good exercise. That's a good clip to go, but I don't know that I would be able to accurately type. Uh, now, I could watch a movie or something like that on it that way, but if you're wanting to write and get stuff done and needing your fingers to work, you probably want to keep it at a slower pace, but if you think about it, what if that was your stand-up desk? What if you walked at one or two miles an hour all day on that thing. If you got your job done, because that's not really that fast of a pace, but can you imagine if you spent two, three, four hours walking on that thing every day, even at a slower pace, keeping your legs moving, how much good it would do your body? I'm trying that. I can't wait to try it. I couldn't figure out exactly how I was going to do the desk setup so that my computer would sit up there safely and not fall down with the action and movement and vibration that's going to be going on the treadmill. But now that I think I've figured out a way to do it, I cannot wait to get my rig set up and try this because I think I'm going to get a lot done. I'm going to be able to get my walk in and I'm going to use that time to write my blogs and to write on my novelization of Mr. Long and all that stuff. So. I am just truly excited about being able to combine the two tasks of getting my daily walks in or at least getting some movement in and getting some efficient work done instead of just sticking in earbuds and listening to music or podcasts while I walk. So I'm excited about that. Here's an interesting thing I saw when I was looking at a a blog about making your cubicle just more interesting. This isn't really a hack for making life more productive in the workplace, but it's a hack for just making you smile. One of the things I hear about cubicles is that they're just so impersonal. You just feel like you're in jail. You feel like uh, a meerkat down in its hole, and when somebody calls your name, you pop your head up over the top of the cubicle, and, and just an impersonal space, and people are always looking for ways to make it a home, make it a happy place for them to go that they're going to have to sit in that enclosed space. A couple of things that I saw to enhance your cubicle. One of them is googly eyes on all of your office supplies. And I thought this was funny. It doesn't help anything with efficiency, but it would be the type of thing that I would do because I love to smile, I love to laugh, and I love for people to just see what a a funny type of person I am. It makes no sense yet it makes all the sense in the world. And you can get googly eyes for next to nothing in the craft section of most of your retail places. Or even, uh, you might even be able to find them in the toy department. I'm not sure, but usually the craft place, you can find the little plastic googly eyes that have an adhesive backing and stick them them on the handset of your phone. Stick them on uh, up above the screen on your computer monitor and give a little bit of life to all of the stuff in your office. And all of a sudden, you've got a whole myriad of friends to work with that have little googly eyes. I thought it was funny and I thought it was cute. And I said, you know what? (laughs) 
that seems like something I would do. Also, um, I'm going to keep this in the same area of with the cubicle. One thing you can do if you've got one of those office, uh, I mean, one of those open cubicles to where you've got three walls and then the fourth one is open and anyone can just come in and you have no privacy. If your boss will let you, you might try getting one of those accordion dividers, a room divider type little thing to stick in front of it. And all you got to do to go in and out is just kind of open it up and close it up. It's not going to lock, but it's going to kind of give you some privacy there where if someone needs to come in, they're hopefully going to feel like they have to kind of knock or say, hey, can I come in give you a little privacy? Uh, or at least you can see somebody opening it up and not be surprised. I'm that kind of person. I would definitely be needing to put a room divider uh, on my cubicle if it was open on one wall. I just would if I had a boss that would let me do it. That's why I went to work for myself, so I wouldn't have to ask a boss. I can just do what I want to. Next, my wife is always talking about how cold she gets at work. And I'm going to mention this to her. I don't know whether she'll be allowed to or not, but maybe she will. She doesn't work in a cubicle, but she does work in little sectioned areas. My wife works for a bank. She's a head teller at a major bank in the southeast. And one of the things they don't like you to do is bring in space heaters. I guess because they think maybe it's a fire hazard. I don't really know. They're afraid maybe people are going to leave them on overnight and not think about it, and then you've got a bank burning down. Maybe that's why, but every bank she's worked for, she has told me they tell them not to use the little space heaters. Well, it can get cold in the wintertime, and most of the time it's women that are working the front line at the, ca uh, not cashier, but the teller stations. That's not me being sexist. I go to plenty of banks that have guys working that too, but generally it's, uh, it's tellers at the bank or women most of the time. Women tend to get cold. Oh, so what do you do if you're in a situation where they don't want you to keep an individual space heater in your station, but you're cold, like my wife gets? Why not put a lamp? Did you know that that bulb is going to create some instant heat for you? And you can kind of even take the lampshade and, and maybe angle it outward towards you a little bit to direct some of that heat. And if you really want it to get hot, I suppose you could take some aluminum foil and line the inside of the lampshade. I don't know how safe that would be, but a lamp provides instant warmth in your cubicle or your workspace for you. It's not going to be night and day difference. But if you need a little extra warmth, maybe that's something to think about is putting a lamp with a light bulb in it and, uh, and provide some heat that way. Here's a neat idea. I have worked in spaces before where I needed to keep my books up and I had a hard time for whatever reason keeping bookends available. Uh, somebody would take them or I would use them for something else and suddenly I needed another set of bookends. Find some big rocks, a couple of big rocks that will sit flat on your desk and securely and spray paint them. Uh, the thing I saw was spray painting them gold. But you could spray paint them any color that you want to and you make an instant interesting set of bookends. There are these push pins called T-pins and they're like regular push pins but instead they kind of look like a, a push pin and a paper clip got together and had a baby. That's basically what it looks like. It looks like a paper clip that one end is uh, pointed for a pin and then the other end it's been kind of bent together to put make a little T. It's called a T pin. If you put those together side by side they create little pockets that you can put on a cork board or in the wall depending on, on where you are that can hold things like your markers and and different things. They're great for organizing if you arrange them in a certain way, uh, put them together to make little pockets. Have you ever wondered what can I do for a gift for everybody in the office? Here's a great idea. Now, I've got a process that I'm going to have to explain to, to you and I don't want you to take it for a gospel because I think I'm right, but because I'm driving, I did not have time to actually, you know, you didn't want me googling and, and looking at this on the road while I'm driving and I got all this ready right before I left this morning to come to work and I I think I know the process but I started thinking about it afterward and said I didn't really review it I should have reviewed it 
but I'm going to go ahead and tell you about it anyway because I think I'm right. However, if you decide you want to do this, Google it just to make sure. But why not make your own coffee mugs? If you're an artistic type person or even if you're not very artistic and just want to write something on there, Sharpie makes a marker that is oil-based. Now, it is very important that you use an oil-based Sharpie marker and it says it right there on the package, oil-based. Basically, it's a paint pen. It's a Sharpie marker paint pen type thing. If you look for the Sharpie markers that are oil-based, that's what you're looking for. And you can get them in small packs with basic colors or big packs with all kinds of different variations on the same color, just like you can a box of crayons. But these oil-based Sharpie markers, you can take them and create your own artwork on anything from plates to coffee mugs and stuff like that. So in a work environment, usually it's going to be a coffee mug that's going to be sitting on your desk. It's a great idea to add a little flair to your office situation by making your own coffee mug. Like I said, if you're artistic, you can go really ornate. Or if you're not artistic, but you want it to say something that is specific to you or some special saying to you, you write it on there, paint it on there the way you want it to look. But you're not done. Yes, Sharpies are permanent markers, but they will come off if you don't go through this process. And this is why the oil-based product is absolutely has to be the oil based product because you've got to bake that coffee mug and what you do is you bake the coffee mug for 20 minutes at 350 degrees in the oven what that does is it takes the oil paste oil based pigments from the markers and permanently sets them onto the ceramic of the mug that way they're dishwasher safe you can wash them it's not coming off if you do it without baking it, it's not going to be very long before it starts fading and comes off completely just like any magic marker would. This will set it on there permanently. And like I said, if you actually go to Google and look at how to bake oil-based marker onto ceramic, however you want to word that, you can find it and there will be all kinds of information that will tell you about it. The one I saw was at 20 minutes at 350 degrees. I think that will work. I think that's accurate. But like I said, if you're a little bit squirrely on it and want to make sure before you do it, Google it. And this is a great way to make fantastic gifts for people in the office. When Christmas time comes and you need to give everybody a gift and you just don't want to give them a normal everyday coffee mug, why not personalize a coffee mug for everybody in the office? You can go to your local dollar store and get a white ceramic coffee mug for a dollar, personalize it to the person, bake them at 350 degrees for 20 minutes, and they've got their own personalized coffee mug that you spent your time and effort and talents on and it just means a lot and it's a good inexpensive way to get Christmas shopping or any kind of gift giving done in the office and you can take care of everybody on a very limited budget for that. If you've got a lot of people in the office and you have a problem with them stealing your food that you put in the refrigerator or maybe you're on a diet and you're trying to drink a lot of water and so you keep several bottles of water in the refrigerator that is the community refrigerator refrigerator for your office you're getting up all the time or like I said people are constantly stealing your food why not consider getting a dorm sized refrigerator for your workspace it becomes yours it's personal it's private yes it's small but you don't need all that much and you can probably even fix it up with a lock if you wanted to uh, fairly easily if it, if it was that bad, if you had people with that sticky fingers in your office, fix it up with a lock. And you've got your own personal refrigerated space, so you don't have to keep getting up and wasting time. You can have your cold beverages right there, so you can keep your work going, and you can also keep your items that you have brought from home that need to be refrigerated secure. Again, it's not gonna be much space, but it should be enough for you in an office environment. Those little dorm refrigerators, and I don't think they're that expensive. And then finally, I thought this was adorable. To me, this is really kind of my favorite one and the one I would be most likely to do if I had a cubicle or workspace. And it's another way to organize the cords and cables and chargers on your desk. 
I can't do it at my home office right now because I've got a three-year-old and she would not leave them alone. She would want to constantly mess with them and, and take them down and I would never see them again. But if you work in an office environment where you don't have kids running around to mess with your stuff, if you're a parent especially, you've probably got Lego men lying around. The little men that come with the Lego sets, if you take your hand and make the form of a C with your fingers as the top part and your thumb as the other curve, that's how the hands on the Lego men are formed. And they are the perfect size to hold cords. So what if you took a little super glue and super glued your Lego man to his feet to a little one of the little flat surfaces of one of the the bigger flat pieces of Lego uh, building set and you super glued his feet to that and you had two or three of those guys and each one has two hands so you've got you know four six eight portals there to hold these cables and you've got little Lego men holding the cables in their hand and you can change them out however you want to do them, arrange them how you want to do them, get whatever characters you want. You know, you like Star Wars, get the Star Wars Lego. You like um, regular Lego guys, get the regular Lego guys. But it was really neat when I saw the pictures of the people doing this. And that's something that if I were on my own, not only would there be googly eyes over everywhere, but there would also be Lego men holding all of my cords and keeping everything arranged for me. So there are some work hacks for you. There's 14 work hacks for you to help life be better at work. And I hope that they've been interesting for you. Again, you can find them all over the place. It's no, the most of those were probably nothing new to you, but I tried to find some stuff that I had not seen before and pass it along because there's a lot of this stuff that you've seen over and over again on Pinterest and Facebook and stuff. So I tried to find some stuff that seemed a little bit unique and uh, I hope that it was a help. As far as my week goes, when you hear this, I'm trying to stay a couple of weeks in advance, so when you hear this on Friday and it is finally released, I will have had one of my molars extracted from my mouth. The last week and a half have been excruciating for me with this bad tooth. It got infected, started hurting, and I knew, I've known for a while it needed to come out, but I stay so busy, I'm one of those people, I'll put things off until I just have to. And the problem is, when you get a tooth that is impacted and abscessed and infected, that's when it starts hurting. It's when it's infected. When you go to the dentist, they don't like to pull them and extract them when they have abscess in them. They'll send you home with pain medication and uh, antibiotics. And that's exactly what happened. I was hoping last week to go in. I had an appointment with the dentist to pull this thing out because it's driving me nuts. It's hurting. And she said, I can't pull it right now. I'm going to have to give you a 10-day uh, supply of antibiotics. And you need to take these until they're gone. Don't just quit when it stops hurting. Continue through the antibiotics and finish all of them. And I'm also going to give you some high dose ibuprofen to take for the pain and so that's what I've been doing and again as this is first released I will have the previous day had that tooth extracted hopefully I hope nothing else happens and I'll be in some pain and that's one of the reasons I wanted to go ahead and start staying a couple of weeks ahead on this having episodes published so that when things like that happen I don't have to be out of commission and then you not get an episode I'll have time to make make one up if I need to. So, not looking forward to having my tooth extracted, but at the same time, I'm looking forward to having my tooth extracted because it's been killing me. And I've been thinking a lot this week about what I want to do for my son this summer. As this is recorded, we're going into the last three and a half days of school for him for the 2016, well, not, well for this school year. And last summer, he spent nearly all summer long at the Xbox. He got up in the morning, he played Xbox all day, all night, and went to bed. And same thing all day, every day, with a few exceptions. 
because I pretty much booked whenever I needed to book. My wife, uh, he, you know, she's dealing with a three-year-old, or at that time a two-year-old, and uh, she hadn't started working yet, but she was about to start working, and it just, he kind of stayed confined to his room, and that bothered me. I don't want that to happen this year. I want him to get out. He's getting more active, wanting to be outdoors and stuff. And as a father, I want to do more stuff with him. And I want to see to it that he is active and energetic and not just sitting there like a zombie in front of a video game system. I'm going to let him do some video games. He's a kid. I know uh, that thrills him and he wants to do that. But he's with me. He wants to do some stuff. So I'm thinking about doing a lot of outdoors things. I'm thinking about getting uh, me and him a couple of uh, mountain bikes and doing some trail riding with him. We're going to walk some nature trails. He's interested in photography. So I'm going to give him my old point and shoot and start telling him some uh, or start teaching him some artistic ways and, and how to take good photographs and how to use natural lighting and stuff like that. So we're going to do some excursions on taking photographs. He already has a great eye for photography, really good eye for composition that boy has. And I'm excited about it. And I really want to uh, impress that upon him and get him going with that. I'm thinking about buying us a couple of kayaks, a little sit on kayaks and doing some, uh, some rowing and kayaking a little bit this year. He's getting old enough He's 11 and a half, almost 12. He'll be 12 in August, and he's getting old enough now to start doing some more mature type things. And so now that I've decided that I'm only going to work three days a week and I'm going to be home two days during the week and then, of course, on the weekends, I'm going to be having some time during the week to spend with him, and we're gonna, I'm going to make sure I make the best of that because I want to spend as much time with my son as I can. He's growing up. They're, they're both growing up so fast, and I don't want to look back on this one day and say, man, I just wish I'd spent more time with him. I'm going to take that time and cherish it, and that's what I'm planning on doing. That's really been what I've thought about this week. And as far as my positive review goes... There is a new podcast I've started listening to, and I've got a bunch of episodes to listen to on it because I just downloaded them all, and I'm starting at the beginning and working my way back. But it's called The Most Useful Podcast Ever. It's a podcast by Popular Mechanics, and the hosts on there are funny, they're smart, they're interesting, and there's two or three people that talk, and they do interviews with interesting people in the science world for things you can use nowadays. They talk about gadgets that are available. They talk about processes, neat little processes like super freeze drying and things like that. It's kind of a a hybrid on life hacks and how it was made type things. If you like that type of thing from the Discovery Channel or whatever channel used to do how it was made, I love that stuff. It's kind of a hybrid of like that, but with really interesting personable hosts. The sound quality is professional. It's done very well, and it's just an interesting podcast that is not, it's not the same old, same old. It's not some entrepreneur saying, here's how you can make money in five days and retire from your job in two weeks. You know, it's, no, it's not that junk. It's something interesting, and a lot of it is stuff that you go, oh, I need to look into that. So I thought that was apropos for a positive review for the Work Hacks episode, So it's called The Most Useful Podcast Ever. And it's by Popular Mechanics and I. If you're a podcast junkie, go listen to it. Download it. I think you might like it. It's just one of those interesting podcasts that will kind of keep your day going and, and give you something to listen to. Nice little background noise while you're either doing your commute or doing your work. However you listen to your podcasts the best or or the most useful podcast ever. And that's my positive review for this week. I'm Michael Blackston. I hope you'll get in touch with me. I'm going to give you the ways to do that now. I've got a voicemail line at 706-408-7456, or you can get in touch with me via email at feedback at michaelblackston.com. Follow me on Twitter at Everything Arts. I have a YouTube page called Everything Arts. You can go there. I'd love for you to subscribe. I'm going to start pretty soon being a little more active there on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash roadnoisepodcast. Also visit www.roadnoisepodcast.com and michaelblackston.com. Michaelblackston.com I have fixed into a way with uh, Wix website 
so that it is kind of a centralized place for you to go to all of my stuff. You can get my blog, all of my podcasts, everything straight from there. And I'd love to know what you think about the new website. So go to michaelblackston.com, check out the new website, and tell me what you think about it, maybe what's right about it. And if you're having a hard time with it, if you don't really like the look, I'd love to know about that too because I can't improve my stuff unless I hear the feedback. So get in touch with me, tell me what you think truly about the website. And finally, if you're on iTunes, I'd love to get a an honest review and rating on iTunes. So if you're in iTunes and you want to look up the Road Noise Podcast, go look for me there and give me an honest rating and review. And that's all the instructions I've got for you for this episode of Road Noise Life One Mile at a Time. I'm Michael Blackston. Thanks for sitting alongside me in the passenger seat as we learn to live life. One mile at a time.